Melted cheese tastes good on practically everything. That's right, by God. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, episode 342. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about or thread about on the first and only wrestling podcast. That's right. Uh, Go ahead and plug the thread. That's right. So if you follow us on the current terrible social media health sites... Uh, it's at TWL underscore podcast. Go ahead and follow us on the new social media health site threads on Instagram app. Great name. No notes. Uh, and same same username TWL underscore podcast. Or if you just search the ref- wrestling life, it should come up as well. But TWL underscore podcast is the username. So please, uh, please follow us there. Wonderful. So there's uh there's a lot happening. There's a lot going on. WWE had their money in the bank pay per view this past weekend. What'd you think of it? I thought it was a really, really fun show. Um great crowd. I can't I guess that Montreal show had a really good crowd, but that was they were waiting for Sammy. Like <laughs> that's what they wanted. Um so this crowd was just kind of out all throughout, was just having a great time and Felt like everything felt a little bit more. Everything always feels a little bit more important when uh, when you have a super hot crowd and uh, you know big building looked great on TV and uh, thought it delivered a a pretty pretty darn good and and even some newsworthy stuff happened on it. So uh, yeah, I would I would give it at least one and a half, maybe even two thumbs up. So the Usos won the Bloodline Civil War. Jey Uso pinned Roman Reigns. First time he's been pinned in three and a half years. Mm -hmm. They had a 32-minute match, about uh, 22 minutes of which was um, acting. (laughs) And then they did a good solid last 10 minutes, I would say. It was Uh, really, it was just like those two, the Usos and Roman Reigns feeding into each other's worst (laughs) the worst aspects about who they are as wrestlers. <laughs> because... This stuff's it's the most over thing in WWE in a decade though. So it's true. It worked. Like I guess I just I, I'm out to lunch on it. I don't I, like I said, I I liked it, but could have done without the uh the faffing about. But clearly that's a lot of people's favorite part. <laughs> so, <laughs> so... <laughs> agree to disagree. <laughs> And it looks like we're getting Jey Uso and Roman Reigns for the title at SummerSlam. So that's uh, that's interesting too. Yeah, I, I feel like what is <laughs> Jimmy is the one who turned who actually like made the tough decision. Correct. Jay Jay, Jay is a walk behind her uh, to to quote the dream. So really, it feels like Jimmy should be the one leading the charge here but i mean maybe like maybe down the line you do a three-way or jay loses and then jimmy challenges or whatever you can do whatever you want but i guess if you go back to the thunderdome era this all started with with roman and jay so yeah um so hang hang on jimmy is the older twin by nine minutes Mm -hmm. we've already seen uh, Jay and Roman a lot too. I mean, I assume we're going to get Jimmy and Roman too at some point, but it just feels you could odd. build to a like a a bloodline four way. Um, oh yeah, we'll get every permutation of this possible. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, coming out of it, everyone's like when and they they point it out. It's like when when the pin happens and and Michael calls like Jay did it. It's like. Jimmy helped a lot. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But whatever. It's it's fine. If Jay and Roman is the first match, that's that's fine. <laughs> sure. Um also at Money in the Bank, Seth Rollins beat Finn Balor. It's the hardest I've seen Finn Balor work since he became a wife guy. <laughs> so there's that. Um 
EO Sky won the women's money in the bank ladder match. Uh, Trish Stratus took a manhandle slam on a ladder bridge. <laughs> and uh, 37 years old. Ended up with possibly a broken nose. Um, but EO Sky, a clever finish. Uh, didn't necessarily think this is the best women's ladder match I've ever seen. But clever finish with EO handcuffing Bailey and Becky together. Yeah, it was it was a I didn't really like the match uh, for the most part. I with but you got your highlight reel spots. You got as you mentioned, they did the bit with Becky and Trish. You did EO did a moonsault off the top of a ladder, which was like the coolest thing I've ever seen. And uh, and then who was it Zelina and somebody did like a code red and almost killed each other. Onto, yes. a, onto a ladder bridge so i mean you got yeah. you, you got your big stunt show crazy bumps and then uh eo won and you're again this was a, this was a <laughs> this is a pay-per-view that furthered all of the many almost breakup or breakup storylines that wwe has going on right now so it uh it helps further the bailey eo stuff too yeah um cody beat dom dom dirty dom uh they've <laughs> Have I missed something, or was this week's Raw the first week where they were really hammering the dirty Dom Mysterio? This was the first week I noticed it was like on his like entrance. Face. Yeah, <laughs> it was on his uh, on his his, his Chiron Ch- Chiron. How do you say that word? Chiron Chiron. Yeah, that was the Chir- least... Chiron Chiron. Okay, yeah. yeah, this was the first week I noticed it like. An, as like an official WWE branded nickname. Okay. So I think I think it's it was new for this week, but uh okay. maybe it's in the last couple of weeks and I just didn't miss up. But usually once once it's an official nickname, they say it every other goddamn second. So right. it seems like it would be impossible for both of us to have missed it if it had been going on for a while. Yeah, that's that's comforting. Um not much to the match. Uh, Gunther defeated Matt Riddle to keep the Intercontinental title. Again, not much to the match. Mm-hmm. And uh, worst Matt Riddle run by far so far. <laughs> he is very, like, he's more muscle bound than he's ever been. So that's good. His shorts have never been smaller. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And Drew, Drew got a nice little comeback. Everything's fine. Paul, Paul Levesque said not to put in the newspaper that Drew was mad. Yeah, so everything's fine, and he's very happy to be wrestling for the Intercontinental Championship. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. What do you know about that? Uh, Liv and uh, Raquel got the women's tag titles back. They beat Ronda and Shane. Or Ronda and Shane have broken up. And uh, I'm not sure the intent of. Okay, so when they broke, they did the they did this breakup angle. Shane just turned on Ron in the middle of a match mm-hmm. for no apparent reason, and I'm like, uh, do you think that Ronda Rousey is going to be scripted to be the babyface in this scenario? But um, the crowd will turn on her due to her being one of the naturally most <laughs> unlikable people on 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 God's green earth. And you said, well, I think they'll just probably continue to turn up the hair dryers. And uh, pipe in crowd noise as they have virtually for every Ronda Rousey. It's this Ronda Rousey segment on this on this run. <laughs> so then on Raw Monday, Shane comes out and does the big promo explaining why she turned on Ronda, and it's basically she's just she's sick of her. Uh, she <laughs> bad vibes. Her, she wants her to shut up. <laughs> uh, she uh, worked for everything she had, and Ronda did not work for anything she had in pro wrestling. And and uh, she, yeah, bad vibes. And uh, the crowd reacted to Shayna Baszler as if uh, uh, she was MacArthur returning to the Philippines. <laughs> she just they're throwing ch- throwing their babies in the air. And uh, I saw grown men weeping, firefighters, <laughs> troops weeping, big strong motorcycle guys. Yes, they were coming up to Shayna and <laughs> thanking her and shaking her hands. And uh, Shayna killed Rondo with a uh, a shoot knee to the to the <laughs> to the face, and it was wonderful. And Shayna was in fact cheered. Um, I still can't tell if they knew that Rondo was going to get booed out of the building in that segment. It seemed like the way that Shayna 
the lines were written and the way that Sheena was reacting, like they did know. Mm-hmm. But I have a hard time, like in Rhonda pitching this or in them pitching this to Rhonda, I have a hard time seeing Rhonda being like, you know what? I am going to allow my best friend to verbally eviscerate me and to make me look bad and uh, make me the clear, uh, very unlikable person in this scenario. So I don't know. I still don't know. <laughs> it felt a little to me like uh, like this maybe had Paul Heyman's fingerprints on it. Uh and it safe, was safe bed in a Rhonda storyline, I think. Yeah. And uh baby face or heel. There's always a little bit of a I think it was less of a clear cut good guy, bad guy in their minds, and maybe just a let's throw in a lot of like shoot insults that people say about Rhonda all the time about how she's entitled and she gets whatever she wants just because she was a star in another sport and and she doesn't deserve to be where she is and all that. So that that's more what it felt like to me. But yeah, or maybe apparently Rhonda's uh Rhonda's not long for the company at this point. So uh at least according to uh to Uncle Dave. So uh maybe they're just like we don't care about putting Rhonda over anymore because she's leaving. Yeah. Um yeah, she gone. Um, I think I think that's uh, I think that's fine. Uh, Damian Priest won the men's money to make ladder match. Um, <laughs> sure, fresh faced, forty two year old. He's just a forty one year old kid, <laughs> you know. He's not he's not forty one or forty two, whatever it is in uh, in TV years. True. Um. So I guess there's that. Oh yeah, so, <laughs> sorry. I had he's, uh, uh, he's forty. He's yeah, forty. We okay. he'll be forty one in September. Yeah, I mean that's fine. Obviously, the crowd wanted LA Knight to win. They weren't going to get that. So yeah, Priest is fine. We we talked about this in the lead up to the show. They're obviously building to a big Judgment Day split. So this uh, him winning it and then getting involved in the Finn and Seth match and then them kind of furthering that on Raw the next night. Uh, this is a step in that direction. And they did reiterate that, well, it's not so much a problem now because they have a fourth place world title that he can cash in on. Yeah. But, but they did reestablish that he could also challenge for like the U S title if he wants. So why would anyone want to do that? Well, that's what they do with theory last year. Why yeah. not? Great. A and John Cena popped up on the show. That was a nice surprise. Yes. To, uh, to dare London to, <laughs> to give WWE a lot of subsidies to bring WrestleMania there. Yeah. So that was, uh, that was, a nice, that was cool. Yeah. It was a, it was a genuine surprise. Like I didn't see one inkling. No, no wrestling reporter was tweeting eyeball emojis or anything. It seemed like a genuine surprise to, uh, to get him there. And the crowd was, uh, was amazing. I didn't need the, the 20 minutes of him going back and forth with Grayson Waller, but whatever, it was fine. It was, it was good to see. John Cena. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so now we're on the road to SummerSlam. And uh, we don't know what's going to be on this show yet, but we can uh, we can gather that uh, Finn and Seth probably isn't done. Mm. Uh, we can gather that uh, Jey Uso is probably going to wrestle Roman Reigns. And um, Gunther and Drew is probably happening. Mm-hmm. And Becky and Trish are gonna do it one more time. Mm-hmm. And you think a stip for Becky and Trish. Um uh, maybe Street Fight or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. And then uh, I think that might be the end of uh of uh, this Trish run, mm-hmm. which uh which would be a shame. But uh other than that, yeah, that's kind of what's going on there. And uh yeah, any other thoughts on the build to SummerSlam here? Not really. It doesn't uh doesn't really feel like either of the women's champions have a strong direction. They I guess they did a little stare down with Raquel and Rhea, which seems like a match that will um uh titillate Paul Levesque. 
Uh, but it doesn't feel like a match that will particularly excite uh, uh, that many other people. But yeah, well, Raquel is definitely the least over person in her tag team. Mm -hmm. And um, Rhea is a heel that is uh, really over as baby face. Mm -hmm. Uh, And everybody hates Dom. They legitimately hate Dom. (laughs) They love Rhea. That's uh, that's the live reaction. So uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing anymore. <laughs> yeah, fine. I mean, it's, it's strange. Like, you, you feel like you, because they've positioned Rhea as, like, the star of that act, <laughs> um, you'd think they'd want to build up challenges for her, but this is nothing new. <laughs> they, they, no. give, they give somebody a crowning moment like she got at WrestleMania, and then they don't got nothing for you, so you wrestle Natalia for three months. Yeah. Yeah, she uh she wrestled Natty on uh, on Raw on Monday, and it's the it's the best match that they've let Natty have in probably a decade. <laughs> Natty was like, oh, "This is one of the three best matches in my career." It's well, I don't know about that. You've had some good ones, but mm-hmm. uh, it was a good one. Yeah, and, I, uh, I, I, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we've talked about this. It felt like Natty was getting punished for something over the last <laughs> over the last six weeks, where they've just had her get laid out repeatedly by Rhea over and over again. So at least they let her have like a proper match before getting beaten this time. And it was a good one. Yeah. Um. Okay. So we're on the road to Summerfest here. Uh, I went to Raw. A woman spilled three quarters of a beer on my lap. Uh, a giant beer on my lap. Um, don't like leaving the house. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. At least she good. didn't spill the beer on your lovely uh, cowboy hat. Well, what do you know? So I bought this cowboy hat when I went to see <laughs> Shania Twain. Mm-hmm, as one does. Yeah. When in Rome. And it, uh, it's a white disco cowboy hat with uh several lighting features on it <laughs> and a t- a, uh, a a a tassel around it that says giddy up on it um yeah so i uh had to repurpose that for uh, for monday night raw and uh my other favorite ontario cow person <laughs> first time i've seen trish Stratus live even though she didn't wrestle on the show uh, first wrestling show I've officially seen Trish Stratus on in my life, so that was that was cool for me. Yeah, we were talking about that off the air. There, there can't be that many like realistic bucket list people left left for you. So getting to see someone like Trish for the first time must have been cool. Yeah, it was great, and uh, it was awesome. And she's brought back the uh, the face mask gimmick. Lots of like lots of self tributes. But somehow, yes. but they don't feel like unearned, though, like because they're subtle. It's not they're not pointing a neon sign at it. She's just doing it. And if you know, you know, that's right. I mean, if you and if you don't know what the hell is wrong with you, <laughs> that's that's what I would like to say. Mm-hmm. OK, um, AEW. There you go. They got a lot going on there. Mm-hmm. They got a lot of things going on there. We're now over 70,000 tickets out for all in. So that's nice. That's sure. that's good for them. That show uh, is taking place in about a month and a half. And uh, they have a lot of things that they're building towards. Mm-hmm. They have the Blood and Guts uh, Dynamite coming up in two weeks here. They have a Ring of Honor pay-per-view co- coming up in... Uh, I don't remember. Is it is it SummerSlam weekend? No, it's before that. No, it's well before that. I just don't remember if it's um if it's in eight if it's next week or the week after. It is on Friday, July twenty first. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let the, so they're they're running against SmackDown and against themselves. <laughs> Great. Cool. <laughs> Awesome. They have a uh, they have a pay per view coming up in two weeks for for Ring of Honor, but they haven't announced any matches for yet. Um, Blood and Guts are going to have to have mystery partners because um, it'll be uh, Danielson's out on the 
Blackpool Combat Club side and the elite just need an extra guy anyway. Mm-hmm. And uh, Eddie will be Eddie Kingston will be off doing the G1. So uh, mystery partners on each side there. And uh, just generally, um, I, I I presume we're getting Kota Ibushi teaming with uh, with the elite. I don't know. Yep. Ken, uh, I know Kenny cut a promo. <laughs> Dynamite uh, went off the air like mid sentence uh, yes. this week because of a uh, poor poor time management on on the part of the people that run that show. But after the show, and I don't know if this would have made TV anyway, or if this was designed just to be a social media clip anyway. But Kenny cut a promo about how he knows who their partner is going to be, and it's someone he went off to recruit. And he referenced there was like a dynamite a month ago where he wasn't there, and. And Hangman's like, yeah, Kenny's out of the country, but he's not in Canada or something like that. So clearly they want you to think it's Kota Ibushi. So it would be weird if it wasn't. (laughs) Yes. And then Blackpool's guy is probably Jericho based on the the Callus segment on this uh, this past week's show, I guess. Uh, Also, because I'm assuming Jericho wants to be wants to say that he's been in every blood and guts match. Sure. Why not? (laughs) Sure. Why not? What a feather. What a feather to have in your in your bright red fedora. This definitely felt like the first week in EW where Jericho was like, all right, we're killing the Jericho Appreciation Society. <laughs> yeah, which I mean, about maybe nine months too late, but <laughs> yeah. Problem is, he's already started an angle with uh, Sammy Guevara. Does he did he has he going to drop that or? <laughs> Well, Sammy and and uh, Daniel Garcia are teaming in the blind uh, partner tag tournament. Blind eliminator tournament. Thank you. Yes. It's Battle Bowl. You know, that idea that sucked 20 years ago. We're doing it again. Yep. Because if you do, if something is more than like three years old, people forget if it was good or bad and they just do it anyway. See also yep. NXT putting Raw Underground on their show this week. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> but uh, so and Jericho was like giving them a, a real stern talking to about uh, about Garcia and Sammy needing to win this tournament. So I assume the long term direction is still Sammy going baby face. Just a wonderful idea. And and against the heel Jericho. Um, and I guess Garcia will stay with Jericho for the time being until they figure out something for him to do. Everything um, Jericho touches turns to mid. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think. As I would say, nobody's really gotten more over from feuding with Jericho. Maybe Moxley when he beat him for the title the first time <laughs> in <laughs> January of 2020. <laughs> So yes. we're going on about three solid years of guys getting being either the same as they were going in or worse off in many cases. Despite right. despite those, you know, squeaky clean wins they got over Jericho, the selfless man who just loves to put over <laughs> talent. Right. And he only has one wife. That's true. And that's the only person he has sex with. That's right. Um so they have three tournaments going on here. They have the men's Owen Hart tournament, the women's Owen Hart tournament, and they have the blind eliminator tournament. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They have three television shows. Mm-hmm. Um, they have dynamite rampage and collision. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of balls in the air right now. Yeah. And uh, last week rampage pretty much drew even with uh, the live or I guess collision wasn't live, but the collision Saturday at 8 p.m. show did the same exact rating as uh, the 10:30 p.m. Rampage show. So, yeah, it wasn't a great week for uh, for ratings. Also, Dynamite did the lowest demo number in over three years. Yeah, that number was like that was one of those. Is this a mistake? Numbers. It was so low. Right. Uh, all these shows are all of their shows are cannibalizing one another now, mm-hmm. um, because. I don't think the average Joe has uh, five hours to devote to watching television, watching AEW on television in a week. Sure. And uh, and last week it was uh, ten hours. 
I think, mm-hmm. because they had a five hour pay per view also. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't I don't blame them for that. They also just a, a tip. Um, if I were having a television show built around CM Punk and CM Punk was going to be on that television show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I wouldn't wait until Thursday night at 9 p.m. to <laughs> announce that he's going to be on the show Saturday night at 8 p.m. Yeah. And that he's only going to be on commentary. Mm-hmm. I, I would make it known well ahead of time that CM Punk is going to be on the television show. <laughs> yeah, what do I know? Been, might not have been a bad idea, but what do I know? Well, this will be the real litmus test. It's his first marquee singles match in like a long time so <laughs> this is uh you know i mean it can't it can't get worse than four hundred and fifty thousand. one would think i have faith in them <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think this will do better i i thought before this show began that six hundred thousand range would probably be about where it settled mm-hmm and they still have time to prove me right. Um, we'll see. We've got a we've got a an eight hundred, a, a six hundred, and a four fifty now. <laughs> oh, we'll we'll see what they got what they got this week. But yeah, um, live versus taped. Also, uh, I don't think that historically that has never mattered. But mm-hmm. tape show last week, live show this week. We'll, we'll see how they we'll see how they do. And it's like, I mean, it was it was a tournament match, but like Joe versus Roderick Strong is it's just not as strong. That's a rampage match. <laughs> Roderick like, Strong is a generic white guy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um. So yeah, I don't know. Like I wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't put too much stock in this week, considering you have you have a number of reasons you can you can blame the low rating on, but obviously, like we said with. Joe versus Punk in a tournament match on a live show this week. It's it'll be a more interesting to see how they bounce back. It was the day of a WWE show. True. So if you were expected to watch live, you would have already perhaps watched like four to like three and a half to four hours of wrestling. Yeah. Or if you didn't watch live and you time shifted, you know, it's many, many explanations. There's that new uh, diner that's open 24 <laughs> hours. They open Circus was in town, I hear. Yes. So lots of lots of possibilities here. Uh, New Japan ran a pair of pay-per-views. It was like 30 bucks and 20 cents or something with the uh, with the ex- exchange rate uh, to watch two nights of uh, John Moxley doing death matches in New Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, they they swapped some tag team titles. They took them off uh, Goto and Yoshihashi and put them on the Bullet Club lads. And uh, Eddie Kingston won the New Japan Strong Championship, um, which everyone treated like a big deal. <laughs> and uh, Julia won the New Japan Strong Women's Championship, which everyone will treat like a big deal when they start seeing Julia in the United States. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. Those shows uh, seem to be well received. I haven't watched them. Yeah, I mean, credit to uh, to Eddie Kingston for getting somebody interested in a Kenta match in uh, in twenty twenty three. Yeah, I, yeah, but uh, yeah, I heard heard good things about the the Julia and Willow match, and heard good things. If it's your bag, I heard the main event was a was a hoot. So. I'd like to watch it, and I guess if I remember when this show goes on the free tier, or not free because I'm still paying the monthly thing for New Japan World uh, in a month or whatever, maybe I'll watch them, but probably not, and I'm not going to pay $30 for it. It's just fascinating to me that they do like that show as a pay-per-view, but Wrestle Kingdom is still... <laughs> For, like like Wrestle Kingdom and Dominion, the actual big shows are no extra charge, but like this or like the random joint show with Noah or whatever are the ones they try to charge you like thirty five dollars for. It is strange, yes, and uh, we may we may. This has really been the first year where they they've been really aggressive with the pay per view strategy. Mm-hmm. So I don't know that we'll see. Uh, 
uh, you know, Wrestle Kingdom for seven dollars and thirty cents or whatever going forward, we may we may see that. We may see them charge for it, or they may um yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> G1 starting um four blocks this year again. <laughs> um more blocks means better, I hear. <laughs> I suppose. It's a way to try to keep them from killing their already overworked and overtired roster. Mm-hmm. So I guess in that way it makes sense. Um, and uh, and that's kind of what's going on there. All right. Uh, we've spanned the globe. <laughs> Anything else that uh, you would like to cover here? Well, do you have a do you have a thought of who's going to win the G one? If it if it matters. <laughs> um. I do not, uh, unless it's Okada, because I still oh, think we're getting. That. Yeah, I think we're getting Okada and uh, Danielson at Wrestle Kingdom. Um, and I just assume that's for a championship. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't need to be, but um, A Block, Sonata, Shoto Umino, Ren Narita, Yoda Suji. Hikaleo, Chase Owens, Gabe Kidd, Kaido Kiyomiya. That's A block, is it? <laughs> Certainly is. Um, they seem very high on Suji. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. polite and barely and rarely late. B block: Okada, Yoshihashi, Tangaloa, El Fantasma, Taichi, Will Osprey, Great Okan, Kenta. Certainly more stars in that block Mm -hmm. than there are in the A block. Still going with Okada based on this. C block. Tamatanga, Tomohiro Ishii, Shingo Takagi, Mikey Nichols, Aaron Aaron Hanari, Eddie Kingston, David Finley, and Evil. (laughs) Don't see a winner in that block. D block. The Ghost of Tanahashi, Mm. Roki Goto, Toru Yano, Naito, Zack Sabre Jr., Shane Haste, Jeff Cobb, Alex Coughlin. Um, Sabre's Dark Horse, maybe? Yeah. Uh, but I think I'm still picking Okada based on uh, based on these 32 guys in the tournament. <laughs> yeah, I guess I would just look at that and go, well, it's Okada, or it's like they're making a new person this year. <laughs> and it's been a while since like a brand new person broke through in the G one. So I feel like Okada is still the safer bet. Well, they've announced uh, they're they're having three new musketeers. Mm. They have, they have, uh, they've de- deemed uh, Shota, um- Shota Umino, Ren Narita and Yoda Suji, the three musketeers. Mm-hmm. Um, of the three, Suji has already had a title match. He uh, challenged for the title of Dominion. Narita is more or less junior heavyweight. Mm-hmm. So Umino, I guess, is a possibility there too. And um, he's probably the best of the three. Right. So, and, and the best looking, I would say. Well, <laughs> he's a little Tanahashi looking. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Definitely. He's got their vibe. Yeah. So, uh, so there's that. All right, cool. Well, we've really killed a lot of time now That's talking fine. about things that no one cares about. I'll let it. I'll let it out the three and a half minutes of silence. <laughs> I mean, if I had been shuffling papers, this could have been an episode of Wrestling Observer <laughs> Radio. So there's that. Just the dog barking and the smoke alarm going off. Yep, everybody leave a smoke alarm. All right. Till next time, everyone. I mean, <laughs> I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling. Bye bye. bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Here we are, smack dab in the middle of Threads Mania. That's, that's Everyone right. on Earth.
going wild for threads. We've got threads fever. It's, uh, I mean, it's better than modern day Twitter. True. It has the best chance of actually, you know, aping the thing and becoming the thing because it already did that to Snapchat. So, like, right. Somebody's going to get it done. It's probably Instagram slash Facebook slash Meta. Right. What's important is that we all give Mark Zuckerberg another chance to mine our personal data. <laughs> That's right. For whatever he hasn't already gotten out of us through the other two. Right. And as we know, one day he's going to need to see them feet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that guy tried to run for president. <laughs> Or at least was putting feelers out for it. Yeah, he's putting feelers out for it. He didn't actually run, but yeah, he clearly wanted say. to be president. Yeah, yeah. He poked his weird little turtle face out of his out of his hole, and everyone was like, "Oh, this is terrible." Why does and he now- fucking talk like <laughs> that? Now everyone loves him. Yeah. Well. It's like you forget. Have you forgotten how terrible Facebook is? <laughs> say for the many, for the Brobdingnagian uh, feats of terribleness that Elon Musk has brought to us and the world, uh, his his social media site has yet to um, help perpetrate a genocide in Myanmar. So you know, Zuck's got him beat there. Bad. Just everyone. <laughs> everything's bad, and everything's owned. By one of the same three terrible people. It's it's great, and it will never collapse. I try to keep on keeping on.